Hey, Shalom, Shalom. Come here, Shalom. Just want to start off by saying, Ko Halo, Yahweh, Mahashim, Yahweh Shai, Mahashim, Rekha HaKudash. Double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well, and that by the Spirit taught us this beautiful truth. And just want to say, the water to all the Akim, Akwap, that's out here sincerely keeping the laws, the statutes, and commandments of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai to the best of their ability. This is Jah Hanada Wap, just coming at you with another quick camp lesson. Um, we come out to let you so called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans know that you are the true Hebrew Israelites and that we are in the last days and that it's high time to awake out of sleep and to repent to the Father. Yahweh, which the world ignorantly calls, you know, these different names, God, Allah, and Jehovah, and all these different names, but his name is Yahweh, which means that he exists, or the existing one, and the true name of the Son, our King, our Savior, that's coming to get us out of the hands of our enemies, his name is Yahweh Shai, which means that he's the Savior, or deliverer in the Paleo-Hebrew, he's not some white guy named Jesus, man, the letter J was invented in 1524, so we know that the letter J didn't exist 2,000 years ago, so it's very important that you know the true names of the Father and Son, Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. You can't just call them what you want to call them, because you have enemies that have infiltrated the book, so to speak, or, you know, have given you these different names, and they've given you these different images, and they got our people believing that a white guy is coming back to save them when it's a so-called white man, which his biblical name is Esau, Edom. He's the one that has you in the, um, the, the you know, basically the position that you're in. He's the one that, that, that came and enslaved your ass and still got you in, uh, um, in slavery to this very day. He's your oppressor. So why would a so-called white man be coming back to save you out of the very thing that they put you in? So we come out to, um, you know, to break those stumbling blocks, to let our people know, hey, look, the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, is not a white guy, and he's not for everybody. The Bible is not for everybody. The Lord only made a covenant with the children of Israel and the children of Israel only. That's it. You so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans and speckled bird because we do look like other nations. So it's not a color thing. The so-called white man gave you white. He gave you black, called people yellow and all this other shit. But the Bible says that you have a biblical nationality. And biblically, we are the Israelites. We come from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The so-called white man comes from Abraham, Isaac, and Esau, and that's pretty much the fight and the battle that you're seeing going on in the world as far as the spiritual battle that's happening in the earth right now. So Esau, the so-called white man, as his kingdom, his kingdom is starting to plummet, it's starting to go down, right? And our kingdom is starting to come up. And actually, um, lock you. Let me get that in the apocrypha real quick. Second address, um, chapter six. Let's start at first. Uh, let's start at verse seven. And he reads, "Then answered I and said, What shall be the end of the end of the first and the beginning of it that followeth?" And he said unto me, "From Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him." Jacob's hand held first to the heel of Esau. For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. So that's what we're witnessing right now. You're witnessing the end. When it, when it goes off into that word world, it's just talking about an age or a society. So what you're witnessing is the fall of an age of the so-called white man, and he will never be, he will never come back into power ever again. That's overall what you're seeing that's going on in the planet Earth right now. You will never see this man rise back into power anymore. As a matter of fact, um, lock. Let me uh, get up uh, Isaiah chapter fourteen because <clears throat> it talks about this man not being um, not coming back into power and um, and building any cities. Let's see here, so lock you. Bear with me. It's kind of a new Bible. But it's got some really good precepts in it. I got it from Walmart. Uh, I, I, I liked it because it's got really, really good precepts to it. Um, 
But of course, you know, those pages, you know, you kind of be dealing with those pages. They, they freshly new. Isaiah 14 and 21. Prepare slaughter for his children, for the iniquity of their fathers, that they do not rise, nor possess the land, nor fill the face of the world with cities. So you'll have these Edomites talking about how they had nothing to do with slavery. You know, in this day and time, they'll tell you, oh, well, you're not slaves. Uh, we never owned slaves. But guess what? We're still in captivity. We're still in this man's hands, right? We've never been able to leave any place that they've, you know, um, enslaved us at. And I'll just use the Americas as an example. You're not going to be able to just go to the airport and leave this place without this man's permission. You're going to have to have his credentials. You're going to have to have his, his passport, his driver's license, his birth certificate, all this information. And then once you leave here and you actually get to a place of destination that you want to go to, there's a so-called white man on that end. He's checking the shit to see if you, you're actually legit coming from your old slave master. They're going to want to check you. They're going to, you know, you got to see, we're the only nation of people on the planet that don't have that ups like all these other nations. We don't have a border where we're, we're checking passports. And you're from where, sir? How long will your stay be? You know, and, and we're letting them know, you know what I'm saying? Hey, you know, we have our own police officers, so to speak. Got our own military. We got our own laws. And if a, a, another person of another country comes into our country and breaks those laws, they have to go by our laws. We don't have that option. We're just Negroes, Hispanics, Native Americans that are caught up in these nations that we've been enslaved to, which, the, you know, really by, um, it's, it's really prophetic, and Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Sai done it to us as a people for disobedience. And, and, and that goes into Deuteronomy. Right? In fact, let's go there real quick. We, let's get some of the curses real fast that the Lord, or the contract. Now, this is a contract that we made with Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, right? Deuteronomy chapter 28. Let's start from the very top, verse 1, to get the content of the, con the, content of the contract, right? Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Now, this is a part, this is the very first thing that the Lord is telling us. You obey me, you do what I say to do, you're going to be on top of all the other nations. And we were at one point. But, let's go to verse 15. Deuteronomy 28 and 15, but it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. And one of those curses was slavery. Going into Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. Said that we will be sold to our enemies for bond men and bond women, right? And it says that no one will buy us or no one will redeem us or no one will get us out of the hands of our enemies except for Yahweh Shai. And that's what you get in um, Luke chapter 1. If you read Luke chapter 1, it gives you the breakdown as to why the Lord is actually coming. The real good news, and it's to the children of Israel, and the children of Israel only. This is not for everyone, man. Let's go to Luke chapter 1, and let's see what Zechariah said when he was filled with the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit, rather. Right? Matter of fact, I'm going to get verse 32 and verse 33, and then we'll jump down to verse 67. Luke chapter 1, verse 32. Let me know. Let's start at verse 31. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shalt call his name. It says Jesus, but we know that the letter J didn't exist in. But his name is Yahweh Shai, meaning he's, he's the savior or deliverer in the Paleo-Hebrew. There's no letter J, no letter E, no letter O, U, or V in the Hebrew alphabet. Those are vowel points that were created by the so-called white man to distort the name of the Lord. So now in these last days, the Lord is starting to reveal his real true name back to the children of Israel. 
We know that this name by faith is Yahweh, and the true name of his son is Yahweh Shai. That's the name that the gave the um angel um Gabriel gave to um for him to have when he explained to Mary what was gonna be happening, right? So verse 32 it says, He shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father, David. Right? So this is how we know as, as well. It talks about the seed that he would come from the loins of the seed of his father, David, which means that he was born through a man, which his father was Joseph. But you got these damn Christians, these wacky at just weirdos, man. Talking about how um the Lord was born of a virgin birth and, and, and a the Lord, you know, you hear all these stories. The Lord came down off his throne and had sex with Mary. The Holy Spirit had sex with Mary. Some angel had sex with Mary. Or some, you know, just weirdo shit, man. She was betrothed to Joseph. Joseph is a part of the lineage in Matthew chapter 1. And through that lineage came Yahweh Shai, which the world inwardly calls Jesus. When you read Matthew chapter 1, why does it have that long ass genealogy? If he didn't have no father, it don't make no sense, bro. That's weirdo shit, man. But that's all white Jesus Christianity and that doctrine is whack as hell. And the Lord is starting to break down that stumbling block, man. We're living in the last days where the Lord is starting to break, break us free from all that bullshit that Christianity, um, um, you know, these white people beat into us during slavery, man. Now we got a lot of our people that's still going to be destroyed because they don't want to hear the truth, the truth of the scriptures. And mainly it's because the Lord didn't, 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 don't want them to hear. Because the Lord asked, the, I mean, the disciples asked the Lord, why do you always speak to them in parables, roughly paraphrasing? And the Lord told them straight up, look, this is not for them, it's for you. It is what it is, man. This truth is not for everyone. Everyone is not going to get this truth. I was listening to the elder um, yesterday, and he was talking about how it was a short video too, man, real powerful short video that video couldn't have been no more than about eight to ten minutes maybe but he was talking about how he was going up to the scriptures of knowing the lord should be um, enough to know the lord should be enough to us man real talk like you know out of all the billions of people that he could have revealed his truth to he revealed it to you and you got other people that's walking around blind as hell and you like you can't fathom how they can't get it you know, but we know why they don't get it because the Lord said they won't get it, man. He don't want them to have this truth, man. And that's Israelites. So we know that it's not for the heathen, man. It's not for you so-called white people. It's not for you so-called Chinese, Japanese people. You're the enemies of the Lord. You're, you're named off in the book of Psalms, chapter 83. It's like eight, nine, ten nations that's named off in there, which we know all nations are enemies of the Lord if you're not an Israelite. But even Israelites are, you know, Two-thirds of Israel, man, are enemies to the Lord. So the Lord is not dealing with you heathens, man. But the so-called white man got his hands on the book, whitewashed the images, and, and presented himself as being righteous. But look at how he's treating the earth. Look how he treats the people. Only a damn devil will give you GMO food to eat. That shit crazy. Only a devil would fly through the skies and mess your air quality up. You know? Only a devil would fuck up your water supply. Give you all kinds of pharmaceutical pills and shit to take when you're sick, but the but the fruits and vegetables got all everything in it to heal you, man. And he has taken that and marketed it in a in a very wicked way. But let's go on. Verse 33, Luke 1 and 33. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom, and there shall be no end. Why is it talking about the house of Jacob? Why is it talking about just everybody on the planet? Because the promise was given to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Like I said, again, if you just read through Luke chapter 1, you'll get the whole gist of why the Lord is coming, man. Straight up. So now let's move down to verse 68. Sixty-seven, let's start there. And his father, Zacharias, was filled with the Holy Ghost. Now this is going off into John the Baptist's father before... John the Baptist was born, you know. This is going pretty much, you know, same way that the Holy Spirit explained to Mary, you know what I'm saying, and, and Joseph, what would be going on with Yahweh Shai, which the world only calls Jesus. It's the same angel that explained to um, John the Baptist's parents, 
you know, or his father that, 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 you know, they was old in age, man. They had a son too. So pretty much John the Baptist can be um, um, of a virgin birth, if you want to put it like that, because the angel came to them the same way he came to Mary. So what's up with that? Why don't y'all say John the Baptist was born of a virgin birth? Right? So it says, and, and, and his father Zacharias was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has redeemed, he has visited and redeemed his people. Why is he saying, Blessed is the Lord God of the whole entire earth and people on it? Because he knew, he knew that, that, that the promises was only given to the children of Israel. The old covenant was only given to the children of Israel. The new covenant is only for the children of Israel. You cannot get around that. But you got these Christians that's trying to promote that everybody got, got, got a hand in on this, on this covenant. We clearly reading right here what, what it's all about. Let's, let's read further. Let's read back verse 68 again. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people and hath raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. Now, who is David? Right? Who is David? You go into the book of Psalms, King David wrote a lot of those songs. And when you read in those Psalms, you, you can clearly see that <laughs> he's only talking about the people of Israel, man. Who was David? Wasn't he a Hebrew Israelite? What tribe was he from? He's from the tribe of the world called it Judah, but his, his, his name, the tribe's name is Yehoiada. He came from the tribe of Yehoiada. Same tribe that our Lord, which the world only called Jesus, came from. Yehoiada, man. Yehoshua came from the, the tribe of Yehoiada, or what the world only calls Judah. And that's the very tribe that David was from, man. So it goes on to say, verse 70, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, who were the holy prophets? Where were they? Of what nation were they? They were Israelites. The prophets were Israelites, man. You will find no book in this Bible where some heathen wrote a book, man. It's not in there. These books were written by Hebrew Israelites, men of the Lord, man. You're not going to find nowhere in this Bible where there's a book that was written by no goddamn heathen, bro. Not the case. Let's read on. Let's get verse 70 again. And as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved, Mr. Lewis, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. So this, uh, what, what Zacharias is saying here, hey, we have enemies. And that the Lord is going to save us out of the hands of those enemies, man. Who are, they, who, who are the Israelites in captivity to at that particular time? The Romans. And you will not see one time where a prophet or, 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 or um, you know, one of the disciples, especially not the Lord Yahweh's side, that he was trying to save no goddamn heathen, bro. The Lord wasn't trying to save no heathen, man. Verse 72, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to re remember his holy covenant. So who was the fathers? It was the Hebrew Israelites. Who was the covenant given to? Go back to the Old Testament. You're going to see that the covenant was only given to the children of Israel. There were no other nations there, man. The Lord didn't make no contract with them. We just read in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1, who the, who, who the contract was for. And when you go to the book of Hebrews in the New Testament, it's still telling you that the old and new covenant was for the children of Israel. No other nation. Right? So when he, how's it going on? So when these Christians get to telling you about the Lord loves everybody, that's not biblical. That's not in the Bible. The Lord is not coming to save everyone, man. The Lord is only coming to save the children of Israel, which are you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. That's it, man. So it is what it is on that. <laughs> you can't get around it, but these Christians, they fighting real hard. And actually, the Hebrew Israelites, they got, the, um, they got these people actually reading the Bible now. Because before, these preachers used to be able to come on the stage, speak all that bullshit, play some bullshit music, and pass the collection plate, and fool you niggas into giving up a bunch of money. Now, all of a sudden, 
The Hebrew Israelites are out here telling you that no, that they're not teaching the Bible right. So now they got to actually go into it and see what it's actually saying. So guess what? A lot of a lot of the so-called blacks, Hispanics and Native Americans are being awakened. From that dream or that that trance that they were in, that some so-called white man is coming to save them. And now, hey, those very men are on the highways and byways now. I was a damn Christian. I was into Christianity. Going hard body for that shit. I don't know how much money I gave to the damn church, bro. I'm pissed that I even did it. But guess what? That was my path. That was my lot. And the Lord led me up to this point, and I'm praying that he continue on leading me through. That he will not take away his Holy Spirit from me, man. Matter of fact, let's get that in the book of Psalms, which is King David again. Let's get that in Psalms chapter 51. I'm going to start at verse 7. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. This is something that you should be praying for on a day-to-day -day basis, man. Create in me a clean heart, O Yahweh, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. That's something that you should be praying for every day. I pray for that every day, man, a few times a day. Five, six, seven times a day, eight times. I don't even know how many times a day. But I pray that Yahweh Bashim Yahweh will not take away his Holy Spirit and send me back into the world with these goddamn idiots, man. I was with some um, some brothers last night. Shit, I couldn't even really call them brothers. But, you know, I, I've been knowing these, 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 these men, you know, since we was, you know, very young. We all came into the truth together. So I went over to one of the um, brother's house. He was, you know, he was selling something. I, and, he, uh, you know, he offered to sell it to me. And I was like, you know how much, whatever, whatever. And, you know, I had the money I was going to You know, I went over there to actually purchase what he, you know, the product that he had or whatever. You know what I'm saying? And, um, and basically, we're sitting there, you know what I'm saying? You know, just like old times, he, he turned on his Xbox and shit like that. We used to always play, um, you know fight night and you know boxing and you know kind of you know just just you know that 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 spirit of just you know just just that umph of just being challenging you know what i'm saying like kid yeah, you know we used to always play 2k and all that shit so you know i'm not into stuff like that really no more because i really just don't have the time but you know we, we you know it was, it was a chill night we you know we're off on weekends generally so you know i was over there we playing the game and I had remembered that the, where the brother, he had made a vow to the Lord because he had a real, you know, um, kind of a uh, real bad drinking problem, a real bad alcoholic problem, and real bad, too. But he had made a vow to the Lord that, you know what I'm saying, if he, you know, I forgot what his vow was about, but he hasn't, he hasn't drunk no more in years. I can remember us having a conversation um, a few years back, and I was telling him, well, like, you know, you do have to, um, you know, partake of the wine, you know, for the Passover or whatever. But, you know, he didn't agree with that, so, you know, I, I didn't push it. But, you know, again, you know, we're sitting there, we're chilling. And I know that he likes to drink this um, this non-alcoholic Heineken they got. So I'm like, all right, well, you know. Let's just, I'll grab you a six-pack of those, you know what I'm saying? You know, it's on me, whatever, whatever. You know, I you know I drink, a, you know, another type of um, beer or whatever. So, I, I, you know, so, you know, we just went to the store up the street, grabbed a couple of things, you know what I'm saying, came back. You know, and on my way driving back, <laughs> you know, we in my vehicle. You know, he, he whips out the vape pen, man. It just hit the damn vape pen in my damn ride, man. I'm like, I ain't even say nothing because before I see, he pulled up on me uh, not a few months back ago. And that's when I kind of knew that he was kind of doing that shit, you know, because he pulled up on me. On, and, you know, I walked outside. He's on the curb. And, you know, he's just hitting the damn vape pen. I'm like, bro, you know, you, um, you know, you can't be doing that, bro. You in this truth. But, you know, he kind of, every time I ask him, still into this thing, you still into this Bible, you know, whatever, whatever, you know what I'm saying, he always says, yeah, but, you know, he's doing shit that's contrary to that, right, so now, the other brother comes over, and, you know, you know, he lets him in, you know what I'm saying, I hadn't seen him in a long time, because, 
when I first came into this truth, you know, we, he, he's a debater. He's one of those ones that be on there trying to debate um, Sakari and all that shit like that. So, you know, he's one of those ones that think that, you know, he's so goddamn smart. But the scriptures is very simple. And he doesn't take the whole scriptures. He's into all kinds of shit. That's why the scriptures talk about those on um, those of those many books. You don't you don't want to be all up into uh, the book of Adam, the book of Jubilee and the book of this and book of that. And you don't even know the damn book of the Bible. But he's into all that stuff, man. Just weirdo, whatever, whatever. But we all came into this truth. He knows he's an Israelite. We all know we're Israelites. And he's sitting there. And then, you know, we all <laughs> sitting there just playing the game, you know, sipping on my little drink. And he pulls this big ass five gallon bucket over and whipped the lid off. And that motherfucker full of weed. He, he you know, so he, he came over to buy him some bud from, it, from, it, from, it, <laughs> from his Hebrew Israelite brother. You know, he a big ass Ziploc, you know what I'm saying? He all, I'm like, all right, you know, uh, now I'm knowing my cue. This is my cue. And then the other bro that I was talking about, you know, that hit the vape pen, he whipped out, he had like a half a blunt in a damn ashtray. And he, he lit that shit up. So I know now, it's, now that's my cue. I'm ready to rock. I'm ready to go ahead and go. And actually what I was coming over there to buy from him, I changed my mind. I was like, nah, bro, I'm good, man. I don't even need that shit. I jumped back and I jumped in my rod, and I left. You know what I'm saying? But to make a long story short, man, that's pretty much overall the Holy Spirit being taken away from those brothers. And you don't want you don't want that. You want to pray every day that the Lord will not take away his Holy Spirit from you. What's going on, bro? Yeah, right. Chilling, chilling. You know we the Hebrew Israelites, brother? You know that? Yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. We we in the last days, bro. It's time to, it's I, time to get it together. I already know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see it. Yep. Everybody's seeing it, man. It's happening. But yeah, pray for that on a day-to-day -day basis that the Lord will not take away his Holy Spirit from you, man. Because if he do, he can have you out here bugged out. And, you know, I hated that for the brothers, you know what I'm saying? But I had, you know, I know one of the, one of the bros, he was, um, you know, following IUIC because he was one of the ones that took me to the very first, um, um, you know, it was an IUIC school right up the street from my house, and I didn't even know about it. And he put me on game, and we went one Saturday, I wasn't, we wasn't able to make it in. There was something that had happened. We was at the door, and they was asking for ID. I don't think I had my ID or something like that, so we ended up not going. And then when the COVID thing went down, of course, they actually closed that school down, you know? So I never did make it off in there, and that was all by the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. But I used to go over to um, um, Bro's crib on Saturdays, and we would sit there. You know, he would have, like, you know, lessons going on the TV, you know, because I wanted to hook up with him and we get into the scriptures and um, study. And he would always have the IUIC videos playing and stuff like that. And I would be telling him certain stuff about IUIC. Like, they don't call on the name of the Lord, which is Yahweh. They don't call on Yahweh Shai, which is his son's name. You know, and I'm like, I, I was telling him all along, some of the things that they're into, bro, you, 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 you want to get away from those guys. See? And now, he's at a point of growing marijuana, selling the shit, smoking the shit, you know, and, and whatever else he's into, I'm not sure. But, you know, it, it is what it is, man. I, I didn't argue about it because I had already had a talk with him about it. I spoke with him a few times about certain things, but, I, you know, I wasn't going no further with it because he knows better. He has to know better, he, he's, you know. And then I'm sitting there. He had my 1611 King James Bible. Well, you know, that's got the apocryphal, but I actually bought a 1611 Bible with both, you know, all this in one book. And I'm looking at my shit like, bro, you still got that what, man, that bro dusty as hell. I ended up, I don't know why I done it. He, he wanted one. I, you know, I had access to buy another one from this bookstore. And I never did. I just grabbed the, you know, the red book, you know what I'm saying, with the apocryphal, still the same thing. But you know, I had the original 1611 King James Bible that don't have no letter J's in it. And I was like, bro, you might as well let me get this back, man. You're not using it. And, and you can tell when a Bible got used. Like this one is pretty fairly new because I just bought it not long ago. But now my older Bible, you know, you can, you can tell when somebody's thumbing through a Bible. You can tell the use of it. So I'm looking at the Bible. Man, that book was the same way as when, when I first gave it to him. Brand spanking fucking new. Didn't have no damn fingerprints on it, no wear and tear. You know how, you know how a Bible be, man. And I didn't even press him on it. I was like, yeah, man, go ahead and, you know, keep it, man. You know what I'm saying? But I should have kept that Bible. It didn't matter anyway because I still, same old thing. I got a bunch of Bibles at the house. 
I just ended up buying this one because I was thumbing through it in um, Walmart, and I was like, dang, this motherfucker got a gang of precepts. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to need this. And, you know, I kind of fought myself on it. Like, man, you don't need that Bible, man. You got all them damn Bibles. You got all those Bibles at the house. You don't need no Bible. But then it, it broke. I broke down, and I grabbed it. Because, like I said, again, it's got a lot of precepts in it. Matter of fact, let me check the camera. It's locked me. Got to always check the camera, man. Yeah, you know, I hate that for the brothers, man. You know what I'm saying? But, hey, it is what it is, man. This truth is not for everyone. Everybody is not going to get this truth. You're going to have men that's going to come in and they're going to fall out. And I'm praying to you. How about Shimmy? I was shy that I'm not one of those men. I don't want to fall out of this truth, man. I don't want to fall out of this truth. I'm not trying to. As a matter of fact, his mom, man, his whole family, bro. We all came in. It was like about 10 of us came into this truth at one time. All excited, all talking about it. Matter of fact, um, 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 his mom, you know, we would kind of meet up at her at her, at her house because she had a big a big house, cook dinner and all that stuff. And we, you know, brothers would sit around and, and go into the scriptures and all that. His, sis, his sisters and everybody, they all fell off, bro. Now their mom, I'm not exactly sure, but you know, she's kind of you know. Last time I spoke with her. I was telling her about the destruction to come, and she was afraid, you know, she was like, I'm just so worried about my grandchildren. But I'm like, well, shit, you know, hey, these things got to happen, these things got to come, you know, and there's going to be a lot of hard things that's going to go down out here. It just is what it is. We can't get around that. But guess what? The scripture says that, um, let's get, uh, Isaiah 33 and 6. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times, and strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. So this wisdom, this knowledge is going to be the stability of going to be the stability of our times, man. And yeah, we all got family members, man. Yeah, you know, you think about certain things. Yeah, you, you, you can feel some type of way, but you got to push that shit to the side, man. You know, you have to gird up your loins and be men in this thing, man. Yeah, we, we know that some hard shit is about to come. But guess what? This wisdom and his knowledge shall be the stability of our times, and the Lord is going to see us through. Because he said that my servant shall eat, my servant shall drink, my servant shall have joy. Because it goes off into how um, these other nations, man, they're going to be, it's going to be, or, or, or just in general, Israelites are going to be howling for vexation, for spirit. In fact, let me see if I can find that real quick. I think it's in Isaiah as well. Yeah, shit about to get grimy out here, man. Yeah, that's Isaiah 65. It was um same book, Isaiah. All right, now how's it going? The brother playing hip hop array from damn naughty by nature. <laughs> Riding his bike, man, getting that exercise in. But hey, man, a lot of shit about to happen in this planet, man. Isaiah 65. I'm going to start at verse 12. Therefore will I number you to the sword, and ye shall all bow down to the slaughter. Because when I called, ye did not answer. When I spake, ye did not hear, but did evil before mine eyes, and did choose that wherein I delighted not. <laughs> Amen. The Lord is cold, bro. Because our people don't want to hear this truth. So guess what's going to happen? Therefore, thus said the Lord God, Behold, my servant shall eat. But ye shall be hungry. Behold, my servant shall drink. But ye shall be thirsty. Behold, my servant shall rejoice. But ye shall be ashamed. Behold, my servant shall sing for joy of heart. But ye shall cry of sorrow of heart. And shall howl for vexation of spirit. Woo, boy. Let me see what that word howl on. Um.
They say, yeah, it's, it goes off into wail. Well, you know, cry, a real strong cry. You know, when somebody's how, uh, howling, that's different from just tears rolling down your face. You know, a person may be crying, he may be upset, you know, maybe sniffling. You might hear a little, mm, you know, a little whatever, whatever. But this is going off into a person, ah, you know, damn screaming, man. It's going to sound like fucking a wild pack of wolves out here. When these calamities start, man, to hit this place, man. And the Lord not playing no games, bro. And we are seriously getting there. We, hey, we, the times have already started. Matter of fact, I just seen an article before I left the house. I think these, I don't know how true it is. I didn't even click into it, but I seen the headline of um, Benjamin Netanyahu or, or Benjamin Netanyahu, the Hezbollah. Supposedly had, I don't know, shot a damn missile towards this nigga house or some shit, man. Matter of fact, I'm gonna, I'm, let me, I'm, I'm gonna have to look into that. Because the wars and rumors of wars are one of the things that the Lord spoke of, and this thing is getting hot. Now America's starting to send troops over there. And Russia is telling um, Israel, don't bomb certain facilities in Iran. So it's a lot going on out here, man, in the world, man. Those, um, these prophecies are starting to come to pass, man, as far as Matthew, chapter um, 24. Which we can grab that real quick, too. Because the Lord gave us a blueprint as to what would be happening in the end days. This blueprint is right here. Matthew, chapter 24, verse 3. Let's start there. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? Now this word world, let me see what they got right here for the word world. Age. See that? Because you'll, you'll have these Christians, they'll read a, um, a scripture like John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. But you have to understand what that word world actually means. This word world in this context is going into an age or a time period. That's what that's going into. So that word world has multiple um, definitions. So you have to know the correct definition as you're reading the scripture. That's the reason why a lot of people, are they don't know what's really going on as far as this truth. They'll read John 3, 16 to see that word world and actually believe that it's talking about everybody on the planet when it's actually talking about an age, a time period. But let's move on. Now, this is what Yahweh Shah told the disciples once they asked him that, because they wanted to know what was going to be happening in the end times. And Yahweh Shah answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Yahweh Shah Mashiach and shall deceive many. And you got a lot of that going on right now, too. You know, your, your average preacher, man, he's a damn false prophet anyway. He's, he's nothing but a hireling, man. He cares nothing for the sheep. You got people like T.D. Jakes, you know, your Creflo Dollars and all these different pastors. And, you know, those people are damn crooks, man. They're fucking thieves and con artists, man. They're not telling the children of Israel who they really are. They're not telling you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans that you are the Israelites, man. They're not telling you the true name of the father, Yahweh, or the true name of his son, Yahweh Shai. They got that universal thing going on because it makes money. They don't mind North Koreans, South Koreans, Chinese, Japanese, all people being one goddamn church. Your Joel Osteens and shit. They don't care about that because why? The more people, the more money. And they're not caring about your damn soul, man. They front like they do, but it's all, they're greedy dogs. Scripture talks about how they're greedy dogs, man. So you got a lot of that going on these days. So you have to beware and get rid of that 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 um that idolatry, you know, of white Jesus, man. Because white Jesus, that shit is idolatry, bro. Straight up. A lot of our people are going to be destroyed and going to be howling for vexation, and they're going to be screaming to this this fucking um um idolatrous god, white Jesus, man. Verse six, Matthew twenty four and six. 
and ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So you, you, all we hear about is wars, rumors of wars. Day like today, like today is Saturday, you know, they'll show you a whole bunch of fucking college football games and shit like that. Whatever sport, you know, something to throw your ass for a loop. You got your little Hulu and Netflix um, series and shit to watch. You know, you, you know they still throwing di the diddler at your ass. You see this guy from uh, One Direction ended up... Um, they're not exactly saying what happened, but, you know, of course, he fell from the third floor balcony, so to speak. You know what I'm saying? But they found all this dope drugs and all kinds of shit in this fucking spot and, 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 and they and they actually had in the story how he was scared of diddy they actually put the diddler in, in the story of this clown jumping from a damn balcony so that's the type of bread and circus you know they and, and then i seen um on you know on euro news a whole bunch of goddamn chicks sitting around lighting candles crying their asses off over this guy man so this is the type of place and world that you're living in Wicked as hell. They're not worried about what's coming, but guess what? The ass is going to be howling for vexation of spirit when the Lord makes that move. And we can't wait, man. We're praying to Yahweh by Shimei Abishai that the days are shortened, that he'll go ahead and get this thing popping, man. Right? Verse 7, Matthew 24 and 7 again, where nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famine and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places all of these are the beginning of sorrow and that's lovely how you hear the sirens in the background of that being said yeah we can't we can't wait man for the lord to destroy this place yeah, somebody probably done flipped over a damn car or a damn shootout or something. You know, all these American cities are dangerous as hell, man. Why? Because Esau Edom, the wicked, is running this place. Matter of fact, I did want to see. <laughs> Let's see if, uh, uh, if this is really true about uh, Benjamin Netanyahu. When I was, I was, I seen it, it was on my other phone, um, not this phone here, but we can still probably find it if there's any truth to that. seeing it in this particular one but we can uh let's see though let's let's did benjamin netanyahu house get hit by missiles from hezbollah <laughs> yeah hey, hey this was four hours ago matter of fact i i got the story fresh before i left the crib i just you know was getting ready for camp and I'm like, well, you know what? Let me go ahead and dip out. But I seen it. And I'm like, oh, shit. But it says live updates. Drone strike launched from Lebanon towards Netanyahu's house. Gaza hospital under attack. So they shot a damn. <laughs> hey, hey, they out here. They, they, they doing all these strikes. And, and basically, you know, deleting all these generals and all these, you know, um, top men, you know, as far as like, um, you know, what was that? A few weeks back, we had the pager explosions. You know, where, where you know, um, Israel had infiltrated this pager company and um, the guy, the, those guys over there, they had went from cell phones to be more safer with their communications and ended up ordering, um, you know, that <laughs> a batch of damn pagers that Israel had infiltrated and blew their damn asses up, man. When they, they all of them, I think it was an alert that went off at like, like 3.30 in the afternoon. And those pagers actually killed little children, too. Because some of the, the, you know, the children picked them up you know, pretty much it was like, Dad, you know, pretty much, you know, our kids be, they, your phone's ringing, Dad, you know, that type of shit. And, 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 hey, they killed um, quite a few people, man. So now, and they've been doing shit like that for the past couple of years, too. So now, I guess, hey, it, it, you know, you're reaping what you've sown. These, 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 they, they like, well, shit, we, we will, we'll shoot a missile at your goddamn house since you bombing every damn body else. So we'll see what they're going to say about that. 
And America is getting more and more involved, man. They're just going to be dragged, you know, um, and off into that shit. And the scripture talks about how um, the least of the flock shall draw them out. What is that, Jeremiah? Flock. Yeah, man. So I'll get a little bit more into that story and see. But these are the times we're living in. We're living in the end times. All these things are playing out right before our eyes, man. Yeah, that's Jeremiah 49 and 20. Jeremiah 49 and 20. Therefore, hear the counsel of the Lord that he had taken against Edom, which that's the Edomites, man, the so-called white race. And his purpose, that he had purposed against the inhabitants of Teban. Surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. Surely he shall make their habitation desolate with them. So the least of the flock is those so-called white people, those Edomites over in Israel. Here you go. You're the smallest. You're the smallest of the people over there. You got enemies all around your ass, and you just tossing missiles all over the place. None of those nations like you. And then you got America that's that's sending all this, all, all your taxpayer money over there. He's sending all the weapons over there, and now he's got boots on the ground over there, man. So this man is about to draw you straight into World War Three. Right? Let's get that in Revelation. Because these white people only know war, man. That's all they know is, is bloodshed. Because ever since he was gifted with that sword, he's been living by it. Revelation 11 and 14. The second woe is past, and behold, the third woe cometh quickly. That third woe is World War III, man. And that slaughtering that went down in the, in the second woe, World War II, that ain't that one shit compared to what's coming right now, man. And that's why that scripture talks about seven women shall take hold of one um of one man. Because these white people are about to draft all y'all men and send them over there. And you stupid, doopy ass uh, uh, so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans that's thinking that you're fucking Americans, they're going to send your ass over there on the front line and get your legs blown off. And you're not coming back here. You go over there and fight for this man and this, la this is the last war. You're not coming back. So it's going to be a lot of women that's going to be out here that's not going to have a damn man. And they're going to be wailing and howling for vexation as well. Those are going to be your main ones. A bunch of you loud mouth ass women, man. That's you proud ass women. You won't repent. You're proud as hell. You're talking all kinds of shit. But when the Lord breaks this out, y'all gonna be in for a world of trouble, man. Because you're the weaker vessel. You damn near got a civil war about to start. You let Kamala get voted into to this fuck. Hey, you know how they had those those numbers? They had the numbers that, that night, and you can kind of see numbers rising and you know, they state to state. You see them, they are everybody on TV. And you got these fucking politician parties. Everybody sitting around, you know, they got their, their drinking and they're, they're cheering and they can't wait to see their favorite candidate be, um, you know, uh, 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 you know, uh, voted in. <laughs> While that shit is going on, if them numbers get too high for Kamala, you better be looking out for those so-called white people, man, on the Trump side. Because they ready to civil war this shit out. They ready to fight. Matter of fact, that's um that that Matthew, because we read about the wars, rumors of wars, but now in Matthew chapter 12, it talks about that division in the country, man. And this place is so divided. Matthew 12 and on um, 25. And he reads, and Yahweh knew their thoughts and said unto them, 
Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. And every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. And if Satan casts out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand? This place is too divided, man, to stand. America's already doomed. Matter of fact, in the, in the NLT, it talks about um, a nation divided by civil war. It actually reads, it actually says civil war. So this place is doomed, man. And there's no coming back from it. All we can do is get up, get our daily bread, you know, pray to Yahweh about Shemiel shop for our daily bread, go out, do our work that we have to do at the plantation, and come the fuck home. Keep on doing these lessons, stand to these scriptures, and wait the wait out, because it's got to come soon, man. <laughs> Scripture says, though, it Terry, wait for it. You know, things may seem like they're not going to happen, you know, because um, um, you, you got people who actually says it in the scriptures, well, you got these mockers, these damn scoffers, talking about, well, when? People have been saying that for years. People have been saying that throughout lifetimes and shit. There's no such thing as a God. What they're about to see. Let me see this. Check my camera again. Yeah, they're about to see what's popping soon, man. We getting about there to end out, man. I can end out there pretty much, but hey, we're definitely in the last of days. And you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, man, you are the Israelites. And, 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 and we read through um, Luke chapter 1, and you're going to see why the Lord is coming. You're going to see what the actual good news is all about. The good news was about the Israelites being saved from the hands of their enemies, man. And we are in captivity. You can't get around it, man. We, we haven't played no part in the world. We played no part in the world. Matter of fact, 2nd Ezra chapter 6 goes into that. Let's get that real quick. We can end out there. 2nd Ezra chapter 6, um, starting at like verse 54, where it talks about the world was made for our sake, but we don't have no parts in this shit, man. All the other nations are out here trading. They got stock markets, and, and you know, they got their own thing going on. And we're just slaves in all these, these countries, man, that they, they enslaved us at. That's it. We have absolutely no part in this world. We don't dictate no laws. We just follow the, the shit that these people, are, the laws that these motherfuckers give us. We have to send our kids to their schools to learn their curriculum. We don't have nothing like that going on, man. Wherever we are, we are under, uh, under the feet of these fucking people, man. And you got Jake that want to be down with these people. But the scripture says, envy thou not the oppressor and choose none of his ways. That's why two thirds of our people are going to be destroyed. Because they're going to still be grabbing on the master's goddamn legs. Master don't go. Keep dragging their ass along. Master, please. And the Lord got something for you, goddamn, uh, you, you sellouts, man. Second Ezra chapter 6, verse 54. And after these, Adam also, whom thou madest lord of all thy creatures, of him come we all, and the people also whom thou hast chosen. So the Lord created everybody, but he chose a people, which are you Israelites, you so-called black, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Verse 55, all this have I spoken before thee, O Lord, because thou madest the world for our sake. So the Lord made the world for our sakes, but we don't have no part in it as of yet. So when the Lord comes, guess what? We're going to be on top. And you can say that to Jake, man, and they don't want nothing to do with it. Stupid as hell. They prefer these fucking heathens rule over their stupid asses, man. That's why the scriptures call them sottish. My people are sottish, man. Stupid as hell, man. Second Ezra 6 and 56. And as for the other people, which also come of Adam, thou hast said that they are nothing, but be like unto spittle, and has likened the abundance of them unto a drop that falleth from a vessel. So the Lord is telling you straight up, these other nations, they nothing to him. He said they like a, a, damn, a, 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 a damn spit flowing out of your mouth, man. A drop that fall from a vessel. You see this big ass canister? If I drop some water, a, a drop of a sword, I'm not going to be um, tripping on that. I got plenty, you know? 
but I'm not going to be tripping over that droplet. And the Lord has likened these people to like a droplet of fucking water. He called them nothing. And actually, he's going to go on further and says, 2nd Ezra 6 and 57, and, and now, O Lord, behold, these heathen, which have ever been reputed as nothing, have begun to be lords over us and to devour us. But we, thy people, whom thou hast called thy firstborn, thy only begotten, and thy fervent lover, are given into their hand. If the world not be made for our sakes, why do we not possess an inheritance with the world? How long shall this endure? See? So we don't have a part in this world. We don't have a part in anything that's, that's going on in this planet, man. But guess what? Our kingdom is coming. We're, that, that's what we're patiently and faithfully waiting on. For the same people that have had us in slavery, for they asked us to go into slavery. That's, that's uh, going off of two, Revelation 13. In fact, let's get that. Revelation 13, let's start at verse 9. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. This is what we're patiently and faithfully waiting on. For the people that held us captive for these centuries, that they ask is going to captivity. But you've got our people that's like, well, that would make you no different than them. We're all one people. We should just forget about it. Let's just love on them. But guess what? They're still over your ass. And they're still treating you like shit. You talking like you on some level with them or something. These people hate your damn guts. They have a perpetual hatred for you. But our people love the oppressor, man. And the Lord gonna knock off two-thirds of y'all asses right along with these people, man. So I'm gonna end out there. And with that, go along, Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rakah HaKadosh. Double honors again to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone. And that by the Spirit taught us this beautiful truth. And with that, Shalom. Hey, continue on praying for the downfall of this kingdom, man. So ours will be next. We got next, man. With that, Shalom.